Are you the guy that ordered, like, a dozen pizzas? That's me, um, just so you know, I'm not gonna eat them all by myself. Sure. No, really, I need them for science. Uh-huh, okay. Clearly you don't believe me, so let me explain. You see, I'm a YouTuber, and I need these pizzas for an experiment. Tip me 18% and nobody needs to hear about this. How about 20? Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that delivers food for thought with extra cheese. Theorists, here's the deal. I've eaten a lot of pizza this year, and I mean a lot. As a matter of fact, I've probably eaten more pizza in 2020 than I have in any other year of my life, and that's including sophomore year of college, which is an accomplishment. Now, I'm sure that we've all had our dining habits upended to some degree, thanks in large part to the pandemic. In my case, ordering pizza has been a safe, easy, and cost-effective way to get my family of three fed in a pinch, but because because we've been ordering out so often, the cost-effectiveness of it all has suddenly become a top priority. Now, let me just say this up top, this episode is not about the finer, more subjective aspects of pizza. So all you Italian, New Yorker, and Chicago pizza purists, we're gonna hear your arguments in a future episode. Today is all about who can get delicious pizza to my door and into my stomach for the best value. We're talking about the big boys, the multinational pizza chains that deliver pizza to the most customers. No matter where in the world you're watching this episode from, there's a good chance you're familiar with at least one of the four biggest pizza chains worldwide, Domino's, Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, and Papa John's. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I definitely prefer the pizzas from certain companies on this list over others, but at the same time, I'm not here to argue against the world's palate. These four companies have all managed to strike a chord with customers the world over. So today, Food Theory is focusing on a more measurable and objective metric, value. That's right, we're gonna figure out who delivers the pizza that's objectively the best for your buck. We've done it with fast food fries, we've done it with fast food soft drinks, and today, Food Theory is doing it with pizza chains. So kick back and enjoy yourself a slice, theorists. Today we're gonna show you, the consumer, which pie takes the cake. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there are a few major categories that need to be addressed. The first is how much pizza I'm getting for my dollar. I wanna know how many grams of pizza my dollar is buying. The way I see it, if I'm gonna drop my hard-earned money on a pizza, it better fill me up. Look, if I wanted to eat food that's actually just air, I'd go buy some cotton candy. But if I wanna feel like there's a giant stone rolling around in my gut, and I do, that means it's pizza time, baby. I also want to focus on toppings. We definitely got to judge these pizza chains based on their toppings. Are they generous with the amounts, or are they overcharging relative to other restaurants? It's important that we compare like-sized pizzas, and it just so happens that all four of our pizza chain restaurants offer a 14-inch option. So to keep things fair, we only ordered 14-inch pizzas across the board. We also stuck with each restaurant's standard pizza crust. That is to say, no deep dishes, no thin crusts, no fancy stuff. In the case of Domino's and Pizza Hut, that was their 14-inch large hand tossed. For Little Caesars, it was the 14-inch round pizza, and at Papa John's, we went for the 14-inch large original crust. We assigned this experiment to food theory field researcher Amy, who you might remember as the Tootsie Pop champion and our Chuck E. Cheese dance rebel. Amy ordered the same three pies from each restaurant. One cheese pizza, one pepperoni pizza, and one pizza with extra pepperoni. Why these three types, you ask? Well, the cheese pizza gave us a baseline for the weight and price of each restaurant's 14-inch pizza. The pepperoni pizza gave us a sense of how much topping each pizza chain is gonna add, as well as how much each chain charged for a single topping. Finally, the extra pepperoni pizzas not only gave us an additional data point on topping generosity, but also gave us a glimpse into what each pizza chain interprets an extra topping to mean. Granted, pepperonis aren't the only topping out there, but it was a good variable to isolate because all four chains offered it. Using a kitchen scale, Amy Wade all 12 individual pizzas. She then meticulously plucked off all the pepperonis and weighed them separately. Lastly, we recorded the takeout menu price of each pizza. We debated including the delivery fees in the price, but certain restaurants had flat delivery fees and others changed the amount based on the distance they had to deliver, so to eliminate that as a variable, we just went for a flat rate pizza, no deals, no coupons, no added fees. And so, with all the raw data in hand, it was time to crunch the numbers. Immediately, before even doing any calculations, a disturbing trend stood out. Almost every pepperoni pizza weighed less than the cheese pizza from that restaurant. And extra pepperoni also weighed less. Sometimes it weighed even less than the regular pepperoni toppings. And not just a little bit less, I am talking a lot a bit less. Look at these numbers. Domino's, 
cheese, 736 grams, pepperoni, 695 grams, extra pepperoni, 706, Papa John's cheese pizza, 884 grams, pepperoni, 820 grams, extra pepperoni, even less, at 798 grams. Same thing at Pizza Hut. I mean, that is a huge difference. I think it's fair to say that when you order a pizza from any of these chains, the assumption is that the cheese pizza is the base that you're getting, and that adding toppings is getting us all the cheese plus the meat or veggies that you ordered. As such, the pizza should be getting heavier the more toppings that are getting added, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Somehow the pizza as a whole is getting significantly lighter once you add the toppings, meaning that these restaurants are, intentionally or no, quietly taking away the cheese. Now, maybe this is a cost-saving measure on the part of the restaurant, but honestly, I think it actually comes down to the employees. My best guess for why this might be is that if you get a cheese pizza, there's nowhere to hide. The employee feels pressured to make sure that the whole pie is covered with topping, so you're getting a few extra handfuls of cheese sprinkled on, whereas toppings actually cover a lot of sins and holes of marinara sauce peeking out. That would explain why, at 50% of the restaurants, the extra pepperoni pizzas ended up being the lightest of the three, which is, you know, the complete opposite of what I would have expected. Anyway, that was a huge revelation, and if you happen to have any theories of your own, or you've worked at a pizza restaurant and know what's actually going on here, leave a comment down below. I'd actually love your thoughts as to what's truly going on here. You'll also notice that there was one chain that didn't have this issue, and it was Little Caesars. Theirs was the only pepperoni pizza of all the ones that we tested that actually outweighed the cheese. So lesson number one coming out of this episode, when you order a pizza with toppings, you're not getting a cheese pizza plus whatever's on top. As you add toppings, your cheese amount is decreasing accordingly. Next, I was curious to know which pizzas weighed the most per unit cost. By dividing the weight of all three pizzas by the cost of all three pizzas, we were able to determine the grams of pizza per dollar for each restaurant. In this category, Good Guy Little Caesars was yet again the runaway winner, averaging a whopping 106 grams of pizza per dollar spent. No other restaurant was even close. Second place was Papa John's at 56.6, almost half of Little Caesars total. And that was second place. Pizza Hut actually placed last in this category with a mere 42.6 grams of pizza per dollar. The individual pizza that was the most cost optimized was the Little Caesars pepperoni coming in at 131.7 grams per dollar spent. Pizza Hut's extra pepperoni on the other hand at just 35.5 grams of pizza per dollar was the lowest ranked of all tested. So at this point, something is already becoming crystal clear. Little Caesars pizzas are more or less the same amount of food as their competitors, yet for some reason their prices are just way lower. I mean, I'm talking half the price. The Little Caesars pepperoni pizza, for instance, cost us $5.55. And again, this is the flat rate for the pizza. No coupons, no deals, no nothing. Well, every other pepperoni pizza that we purchased cost us more than 14 bucks. So how is Little Caesars pulling this one off? What are they doing differently that allows them to sell the same amount of food for half the price. Is it really that the quality of the pizza is just that much lower? Well, it actually turns out that there's a few reasons. For one thing, Little Caesars is a far more stripped down operation than the other pizza chains in the experiment. Because Little Caesars doesn't offer dine-in to its customers, they actually save a ton of money on the overhead. They don't have to rent as much square footage. They don't have to hire waiters. They don't have to have on hand a bunch of dishes and silverware and sinks to wash it all. All of that factors into the cost. They also do the absolute minimum when it comes to delivery. For the past 20 years, they haven't had delivery as an option. This year was the first year they brought it back, and even then, it was mostly through third-party apps like DoorDash. So Little Caesars is outsourcing their delivery, while the competitors are shelling out to hire in-house delivery drivers. Another reason Little Caesars' prices are so low, and this is the one that you might expect, is the cost of ingredients. For instance, Little Caesars blends less expensive Munster cheese with its mozzarella cheese, and the competitors don't, so that's gonna save them there. But here's what really surprised me. Perhaps the biggest reason why Little Caesars can sell its pizza for less is the fact that they're not entirely in the pizza game. They're in the food distribution game. If you saw our past food theory on how McDonald's is actually a real estate company, you understand how a restaurant can keep its prices ridiculously low by making its real money in a connected industry. In McDonald's case, they got into the real estate game as a way to earn rent off of its franchises. In Little Caesars' case, they saw an opportunity for expansion in the food 
food distribution industry way back in the early 1970s. Like any restaurant, Little Caesars has to deal with the problem of how to get ingredients and products to its various locations, so they developed an in-house distribution network, but soon realized that the food service distribution game was maybe more lucrative than the pizza game. So Little Caesars took the distribution network and broke it off into a new company today known as Blue Line Food Service Distribution, which sends ingredients and other products to Little Caesars, as well as plenty of other companies outside of the Little Caesars family. Since Blue Line and Little Caesars are both under the same parent company, their distribution costs are heavily subsidized, and it helps keep their prices ridiculously low. Pizza pizza? More like trucking trucking. So it seems like Little Caesars has the luxury of not having to worry about pizza profits the same way Domino's, Papa John's, and Pizza Hut do. But while their pizza might be cheaper, doesn't necessarily mean it's objectively better. And we still haven't talked about toppings, so let's really dig into those results. We've already discussed how adding toppings loses you cheese, so that's a given across the board. But beyond that, I wanted to know who's piling them on and who's holding them back. After all, if I just wanted to eat a bunch of bread with a little bit of stuff sprinkled on it, I would have just ordered the crazy bread. So we calculated the toppings percentage by weight for each of the pepperoni and extra pepperoni pizzas by dividing the weight of the isolated pepperonis by the weight of the entire pizza. This tells us of the total weight of the pizza, how much of that weight is coming from the toppings. I'm paying a premium for the extra stuff on top, I want to make sure that I'm getting a lot of that extra stuff. The restaurant with the best overall toppings percentage was Pizza Hut, whose pepperonis accounted for an average of 17.5% of total weight. Little Caesars, with just 7.9%, had the lowest topping percentage of all the restaurants. Now, if you love pepperoni with all your heart, then the Pizza Hut extra pepperoni pizza is the one for you. It had the highest toppings percentage of all individual pizzas with nearly 20%. Conversely, the Little Caesars pepperoni pizza had the lowest topping percentage at just 6.2%. Toppings, it would seem, is another place that Little Caesars is cutting its costs. But you can't really hate them for it because, well, they're not charging you for that. To understand why, let's look at our final category, grams of topping per dollar. Here, we took the weight of the isolated pepperonis and divided it by the additional cost that the customer pays in order to upgrade. This gives us an idea of which restaurants are overcharging for the toppings. And looking at the chart, it certainly isn't Domino's who had the most grams of topping per dollar with 42.2. Papa John's was the worst value in this category with just 29.9 grams of topping per dollar. But what I really want to talk about here is Little Caesars yet again, whose grams of topping per dollar broke mathematics. Little Caesars is charging the same amount for their cheese pizza as they do their pepperoni pizza. That means that they're adding pepperonis for zero dollars. That's right, they are giving the pepperonis away for free. And you can't divide by zero, folks, which makes their rating in this category defy all mathematics. Honestly, it's pretty obvious that Little Caesars toppings are fewer and of a lower quality than the other three restaurants. Little Caesars is pepperonis are thinner, they're brittle, they don't have that oily texture that you'd expect from a pepperoni. Like I said before, they're definitely skimping on the number that appears on the pizza itself, but there's no denying that when it comes to pure dollars and cents, if you want something that is technically a pepperoni pizza, well, it's clearly the best value with a price tag of zero. So here we go, theorists. Time to announce our overall winners and losers. In the cheese category, the Little Caesars 14-inch round cheese pizza is offering you the best value. The Papa John's cheese pizza gets second place, Domino's is third, and Pizza Hut is rounding up the rear. Now, how about the best value pepperoni pizzas? Well, after tallying the scores of every pizza across every category, Little Caesars again comes out on top, but obviously with the caveat of lower quality pepperonis and fewer on the pie. If you're looking for a higher quality pepperoni pizza, well, Domino's offers the second best value with Pizza Hut in third and Papa John's in fourth. Now, the best value for pizza with extra pepperoni is Domino's by a wide margin. Papa John's and Pizza Hut tie for second, and Little Caesars is in dead last because, again, they don't really care about the toppings all that much. Which means that it's now time for the big one. The granddaddy of them all, when all the scores are tallied up, the pizza chain that objectively offers the best value for all of their pizzas is Domino's, which... It's honestly kind of surprising because a few minutes ago it was feeling like Little Caesars had this thing in the bag. The reason they fell so far in the final rankings is the toppings. If you just want a cheese pizza or if you want a pepperoni pizza but don't care too much about the amount or quality of the topping, well then Little Caesars is the clear winner hands down no question. But because two of our categories factored in the total amount of topping you're getting, both by price and weight of the pizza, their overall scores suffered. Which means that in the end Little Caesars has to settle for a third place ranking 
ranking. Domino's, thanks to its strong toppings game, is your overall pizza chain champ, with Pizza Hut in second, and Papa John's well and truly in last place, neither delivering on value or on toppings. So with all our results finally being in, there's one last thing to do, provided you're into pizzas with all the pepperoni picked off. Pizza party at Amy! But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs> Thanks for watching, food theorists. If you dug this episode, well, you're gonna love our other value optimization episodes, like our recent theory on getting the best deal possible on fast food fountain drinks. Be sure to check it out by clicking the link you see on screen right now, you savvy soda shoppers. And while you're at it, click that red subscribe button, my friends. It costs you nothing, but saves you everything. Well, maybe not everything, but maybe a couple bucks on the next pizza you buy.